Come on, give a shout of praise this morning. Who's ready to worship today? Who's ready to worship today? Come on, come on, come on, push it more. A few more seconds. Shake everything off. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Give a shout of praise. I was buried beneath my shame. There we go. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn. Yeah. Till I met you. Thank you, Lord. But not alive. All my failures I try to hide. It was my turn yeah. till I met you. Then you called my name. To your glorious day, you call my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness, into your glorious day. Hallelujah! Here we go. Now you save my soul thank you lord and now your freedom is all that i know listen the old made new yeah jesus when i made you oh what a day when you call Y'all know this part. You ready? All right, here we go. You ready? I just start. I promise. I needed rescue. My sin was heavy. But chains break at the way to your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future. My eyes are open. Oh, 
you glad God called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, into the kingdom of his dear son? Aren't you glad he called you out of your grave and gave you resurrection, life, and power? Hey, we're going to celebrate that today. If you're watching online, thanks for joining in. Press in. Hey, I, I'm, I just got a word from God today that we just need to really press in today. We need to go all in. We need to dive into the river. We need to press into the spirit of God and to the presence of God. And I believe he's going to show up strong today. I'm believing that in, your, in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you're watching online, thanks for joining us. I'm Pastor Joe. This is my awesome wife, Pastor Deborah, with our call to worship. Well, can I share something first? Okay. It's amazing he just said that. I'll tell you why it's amazing. A couple weeks ago, I was watching one of our services online, and I noticed that online, according to me, I thought I looked really dorky worshiping down here on this front row. I did. I thought, oh, my gosh, I'm just, like, moving around too much. I'm, I'm lifting my hands too much. It just, I look, I don't look good on on uh, social media. I look kind of weird. So I started holding back. I did. I thought, I'm not going to move so much. I'm, move, I'm, I'm like, all I see is me down there moving. And you know, you just said that and it just hit me. Give it all you got. Yeah. Who cares what you look like? Yeah. Really, I mean, like, the enemy was going to try to hold back my praise. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm Italian. And I just let it all out. And you know what? I'm giving all I've got to God this morning. Will you do the same? Because listen, this is why. Our call to worship, Psalms 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him from the heights above. Praise him, angels and heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens. And you, the waters above the skies. Let the name of the Lord be praised. Okay, so all of creation praises our God. And it's all different, isn't it? It looks very different when you look at creation praising God. But then, that's not all. Young men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord. Now that just about means, it, it, no, it doesn't just about. That means what? Everything. The earth creation and everything that has breath praise the name of the lord so praise him who cares who's watching just praise him. so come on church let's worship come on help me with your hand Night has fallen, when fear is coming, you still call calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says that I'm good enough. says to me now there's no stopping what you have started until it is complete when my come on I can't hear you church God you're enough for me I decided I decided not to give up you won't give up on me you won't give up
Come on, lift up your voice and say, There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power. power in your name. Lift up your voice and say, There is power.
See, I don't know what kind of baggage you came this morning with. I don't know what kind of week you have had this week. But I want to tell you something that when you lift up your voice and you praise, even when you don't feel like something happens when you call, something happens when you lift up your hands, there is freedom. So what I want you to do is think of whatever's been bothering you this week. And at the count of three, you're going to call out his name. Oh, man. And things are going to break. Chuckles are going to break. Something is going to happen when you call. That job offer is going to come. The healing is going to come. The deliverance of your children is going to come. Oh, the freedom of your husband, of your spouse is going to come. When we call his name, come on, I want you to get ready. Get ready, get ready, because something is going to break up this morning. Get ready, come on. Yeah, one. Just close your eyes and lift up your hands. Ooh, his presence is in this house. Listen, your goal this morning, if you're in this auditorium, if you're watching online, you need to understand that your goal this morning is not leaving this place the same way you came in. Something needs to happen in your favor. And until you don't declare it, until you don't believe it, nothing is going to happen. The, the Bible says that death and life is in the power of what we speak. You need to speak life. You need to speak freedom. You need to speak healing. You need to leave this house in a completely different setting as you came in. Oh, we worship you, God. Just give him a few seconds right there. So.
Your voice and say, Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Everybody lift up your voice and say, The fear that held us now gives way to him who gives our peace. His final breath upon the cross is now alive in me. Come on, lift up your voice. Your name. Your name is victory. Your oh, praise, all oh, praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. All oh, praise will rise to Christ our King. Yeah. We worship you, Lord. Worship your Father. Oh, by the Spirit I will rise from the ashes of the feet. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected. Come on, lift up your voice. Sing it! By the Spirit, I will rise from the ashes of the feet. Oh, resurrecting He's resurrecting me. He's resurrecting me. In your name, I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. Spirit, I will rise from the ashes of the feet. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name, I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me.
the, the song is really moving on me today. And, you know, I know when we think of walls coming down, we, we tend to think of the walls that are up in our nation, like the walls that divide, political walls, racial walls, walls of division, walls that keep some people out and let some people in. We, we think of that. And that's important. And we've got to think of that. And we've got to pray about that. But what God was dealing with me as we were singing this song is that we have, before we can break down those walls, listen, I got to break down my walls. I got walls. You got walls. And walls are things we put up to protect, listen, to protect ourselves. Maybe we got hurt. Maybe we got hurt in relationships, maybe more than once. And brick by brick and layer by layer, and we start building these walls to protect our own hearts, to protect ourselves, to keep from being hurt. But sometimes, listen, sometimes people build those walls in relation to God. Not even knowingly sometimes, but, you know, God disappointed me. I thought he was going to do this. And he didn't do that. Or he didn't do it how I wanted it or when I wanted it or how I thought he would do it or who I would thought he would do it through or do it with. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. And all of a sudden, it's a little by little. It's brick by brick. It's a layer by layer. And all of a sudden, you feel like, where's God? God hadn't moved. God hasn't changed. But we've built that wall so high now that it, it's, it's blocked out his light. And, and I'm just feeling, I'm feeling it online. Listen, I'm feeling it for you. I'm feeling it for us here. That God wants to break down walls in us. Walls that may be hindering us in our career. Wall that, walls that may be hindering us in our relationships with people. Walls that w may be hindering our uh, relationships in our family. Walls that may be hindering our relationship with God. And, and it may be a process of tearing that wall down. I get it. But part of that is marching around that wall and shouting the victory. Part of that is getting in the presence of God. Part of that is repentance of God. I'm sorry, God, forgive me. God, I, I put up a wall. God, help me tear this thing down. I don't, even, I don't even know how, God, but would you tear it down? Spirit, would you break out in the name of Jesus? God, revival starts in me. It starts in you. We, we want an outpouring in the United States. We want an outpouring in this world. But how about an outpouring at Grace Fellowship Church? How about an outpouring in Pastor Joe and Pastor Deb in your life? How about an outpouring spirit? Holy Spirit, we're crying out. Spirit, break spirit, out. Would you break out? Would you break spirit, out? Would break you pour out. yourself out on us, oh God? Spirit, we need you, Lord. Out. Tear these walls down, God. Oh.
You know, the Bible says, listen now, seek the Lord while he may be found. Today is that day. Today is that day. We have sought him and we have found him. And he is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. I'm telling you this morning, God is moving in your life. He's, he goes before you. He's behind you. He's your rear guard. He's with you when you rise up and when you sit down. So be seated right now and know the Lord is with you. Amen. Woo. Great job, team. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, team. Man, I just sometimes wish it didn't have to end, you know, but God is so good. Thank you. We want to welcome you and thank you for being here today in the house and online. Today is your day of breakthrough. Amen. God has been good. And whether you're online, you're our, our online family or you're in the building, we are so glad that you are here. And we want to connect with you. And there's many methods of communication that make that possible. Our website, social media, or our app, we are are here for you. Even during COVID, we are here for you. We want to pray with you. We want to minister to you. We are here for you. Um, and this morning, we are going to uh, have our tithes and offerings as another way that we worship God. Um, there are several ways to give, and that's going to be shown on the screen and online. But if you're here today, you can use one of those giving options, or you can place your offering in the receptacles that are at the door this morning. Um, our scripture is Proverbs 11, 24 through 25. This is always my favorite part, the word of God. There is one who scatters yet, yet increases more. Wow, who can do that? God. And there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also himself be watered. So this morning... Let's pray, and let's really lift our hearts today in prayer over our tithes and offerings, Koinonia Church, our GFC missions and missionaries, and our family and our friends that don't know Jesus. So bow with me, please. God, we bring this offering unto you today, O oh God, and we will not withhold from you, Lord. Everything we have is yours, and we give this to you today, God. We're just going to scatter that seed out there as you cause it to grow. You water it. You bring the increase, Father. We give to you today without withholding. We pray over Koinonia Church, oh God. Lord, let, raise them up. I just see them rising up victoriously and making an impact in the lives of your people, God. Lord, minister to them. Give them open doors, effectual doors of ministry. Lord, we pray for our missions and our missionaries. God, we are blessed of all people. We are blessed to be able to go out into all the world and preach the gospel. We're blessed to be able to affect lives, your people, God, and those who don't know you. Thank you for giving us missions and missionaries, God. For family and friends that don't know you, God, we are believing, God. We are standing and having done all to stand, we stand there for by calling out your name, by trusting you, by believing in you, O oh God, Father, that you have already given us the victory, Lord. Open their eyes and their ears that they might see and hear you. In the mighty, glorious, effectual name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you may stand and we're going to sing one more song and continue our worship. And then Pastor Joe will come up to preach. Come on, right there with you. I just want you to close your eyes and lift up your hands. Word. 
worthy of every song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you live for you jesus the name above every other name jesus the only one who could ever Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you. Come on, everybody say, Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder, show me who you are and with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me everybody lift up your voice and say worthy worthy of every song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, oh Jesus, we live for you, Jesus the name, Jesus the name above every other name, Jesus the only one who could ever say, worthy Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Come on, lift up your voice and say, Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes and wonder. Show. Come on, just lift up your hands. Oh, and acknowledge his presence in this place. Embrace his presence in this place. Oh, we worship you this morning. We lift up our voices and say,
seated. Thank you so much, team. Awesome job. Joel, awesome job. Great team. Awesome job. Love you guys. Thanks so much. Um, so what are you building your life on? Well, Pastor Joe, how do I know? Well, you know, it, according to Jesus, when the rains come and the winds blow and the floods rise up, your house still stands. When the COVID comes, when the racial conflict comes, when financial issues come, when there's uncertainty about is school starting or not or what are we doing, all those kind of things come, do you stand or do you shake and fall apart? That, that's how you know what you're building your life on. That's what Jesus said. And I just, uh, by the way, I'm so proud of you guys. We did a, a couple surveys recently, and you'll be seeing some of that. We did one on racial issues and uh, we did one on, on responding to the virus and how you're doing, and uh, you'll be seeing results from those things, and, and uh, we're, we're working on, uh, with those, and we thank you for your input. But one of the questions, I'm paraphrasing it now, uh, and it was like, you know, during these times, is your faith stronger, the same, or weaker? And it was like 90-something percent. I mean, this was one of the highest things and in, in, in ratings in our church family was my faith is strong during these times. And I just want to encourage you that that is awesome. As your pastor, I can't tell you how awesome that is, how much I love that. I encourage you to keep that faith strong, keep standing, keep standing, keep believing, stay in faith. And um, it, it's an awesome thing. By the way, Dwayne and Michelle will be back next week. I know some people have been asking me, where are they? Are they leaving? What's going on? No, they're not leaving. They had a um, two weeks vacation and then uh, Dwayne was um, possibly exposed to the virus so he had to go on quarantine. He got his results back finally yesterday after two weeks and it's negative but he had to be in quarantine. <laughs> it was like Saturday before Sunday so we've had to, ha we've had to kind of uh, punt each week to try to figure out what to do. But uh, Joel, man, Joel was awesome. Joel was awesome leading worship. And um, so, Dwayne and Michelle, love you guys. Looking forward to you being back. And uh, we've missed you. And uh, But I appreciate it. You guys are awesome the way you just press in and worship no matter who's leading. I think that's an awesome thing. That says a lot about you and your maturity. And, and uh, I appreciate that so much. All right, we're in a, a sermon series called Signs of the Times. Now, let me tell you, I'm not normally a, a, a preaching, I don't preach a lot of eschatology, which is the end times theology. I, that's not a huge thing of mine. It, it, I was raised with it. My dad, that's his thing. I mean, he got his doctoral degree, his doctor's degree in, in uh, ministry. On, on he, His dissertation was on the book of Revelation. He wrote a book on it. Uh, he's got, he knows it all, and I was raised on it, but it just wasn't something that I really felt led to pursue, although as a believer, I want to know, and I, it's just not one of my main strengths, so I don't talk about it a lot, but I really felt led after we were finishing up the Tough Times, Tough Faith for Tough Times series, we were going to start a series on the parables of Jesus, which we've been wanting to do for a while, and again, I just felt led to do this series on signs of the times, and and uh, by the way, before I get that, let's say that. Let me just say, Mike and Will, thank you guys so much for all you do. I just want to let you know, if you've seen lately some glitches in the words, that's not them. Uh, there, We got a new program uh, that seems to have some glitches in it, and they're working hard to get those glitches out. And they've 
It's like the go to the doctor and he says, well, I think it's this. And like, no, it wasn't that. Well, I think it's this. No, it wasn't that. I think it was this. Try that pill. No, it wasn't that. Here, let me give you that shot. It wasn't that. That's the process they're in. So what happens in the middle of songs, uh, it's not that they're not paying attention or pushing buttons, but sometimes it gets hung up and freezes. So if that happens during a sermon, you may have to do the old-fashioned way. Actually open up your Bible and look at it if you want to. But uh, that's what's happening. So I just love you guys. Appreciate you. And we give them a lot of grace and mercy because they have been working overtime these past few months. <laughs> when it came time to do this uh, series, you know, I, I didn't really want to feel led to. I don't know where it's going to go. I didn't really want to get into Revelation deep or Daniel's um, 70 weeks deep. We may talk about some of those things. I, I, I'm not going to say we're not. But what I wanted to concentrate on is what did Jesus say? What did Jesus say about the end times? And so, as I said, shared last week, Matthew 24 and 25 are like the clothesline on which all other prophecy is hung. It, 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 it like holds it all together. You've got an, and, and it's totally the words of Jesus. In your Bible, it would be the red letters uh, for two chapters there where Jesus is talking about end times. And last week, we read the first, probably first half or first third of Matthew 24, where Jesus gave signs of the end times. And those signs include uh, widespread deception, wars and rumors of wars, ethnic conflict, famines, pestilence, which is a pandemic, an epidemic of disease, earthquakes, betrayal, hatred, increase in wickedness and lawlessness, people's hearts growing cold, resulting in them turning from the faith, and the gospel being preached to the whole world. He said, and then the end will come. These are signs that Jesus gave us. And if you didn't hear the message, I encourage you to watch it. Go online, watch it on YouTube, on our Facebook page, on our app, um, wherever you get Fire Stick, Roku, all those things. Look, watch it, watch it, uh, because it's important. Because immediately after saying, then the end will come, immediately, Jesus then revealed God's prophetic timetable, God's prophetic timeline, God's prophetic calendar. And you find it in Matthew 24, 15 through 35. And there's going to be a lot of scripture here, but I'm just, I'm going to read it because you need to hear it. So when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand and let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the roof of his house go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get his cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be great tribulation, unequal from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equaled again. In those if those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here's a Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect, if that were possible. See, I have told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you there he is out in the desert, don't go out. Or here he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning that comes from the east is visible, even in the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever there's a carcass, the vultures will gather. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory, and he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Wow. That's the words of Jesus in Matthew 24. My sermon today is entitled God's Prophetic Calendar. And we've got to realize history is going somewhere because God is taking it somewhere. 
History is the things that will happen and are not random. They're not by chance. It's not evolution. God is sovereign. God is in control. And God has a calendar of prophetic events that will happen, not might happen. They will happen. All the prophecies of the Bible come to pass 100%. And 100% of the words of Christ will come to pass. And we just read, he just said it, my words will never, ever, ever pass away. And the Bible teaches that the world we live on will not last forever. Revelation 21, 1 says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And Jesus says, no one knows the exact date that the world will end. And unfortunately, there's a long, tragic history of date setting for the end of the world. I'm going to talk about more about that in another sermon. I don't have time to get into it today, but and even in my lifetime, there's been so many dates that have been given. But Jesus said, no man knows the hour or the day. It's amazing how people think that the words of Christ uh, don't apply to them or something. But here's what we know. God has a prophetic calendar. We don't know the exact day or the exact time. But Jesus prophesied to us in Matthew 24 about events that will, will for certain happen in the future. And we're going to look at these events today. And, and let me say, there's a lot of different interpretations about these passages. But I'm preaching today, so I get to give mine, right? And it's not something I really argue with people about, whether or not some people believe there will be a rapture, some people don't believe in it. Some people believe it will be a pre-tribulation rapture, that, that, that the rapture happens before the great tribulation. Some believe it was, happens after the tribulation. Some people believe in a millennium. Some people don't. And I'm going to explain what all those things are today. And we've got to give each other grace in our interpretation. Uh, the, the, I would say the one interpretation I really have a m huge problem with is called uh, preterism, P-R-E-T-E-R-I-S-M. And uh, preterist, uh, preterist, preter is a Latin for praetor, past. Uh, somebody who, who believes in preterism believes that all the prophecies of the Bible are in the, have already been fulfilled in the past. Nothing is to be filled in the future. There are partial preterists who believe some things are still in the future, but basically they believe that what Jesus was talking about was the fall of Jerusalem in A.D. 70, and that, that they really believe that was the end of the world, that the, that was the tribulation, that Jesus came back, that Satan's been bound and thrown into hell along with the beast, and and there's a new heaven and a new earth, and we're living on that new earth right now. They believe all those prophecies have been fulfilled. And I, and I think just from the plain reading of the scripture that we just read, they have to spiritualize so many things, like the second coming of Jesus Christ, where the, Jesus said, uh, it's like the sun shining from the east, seen in the west, and I'm going to show it to you again here in a minute. Everybody will see it. It's not a spiritual thing that, we, that, 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 well, she just came back and nobody saw it, but it, but it did happen. Just trust me, it happened. Uh, no. no. We're going to look clearly what the Bible says about the second coming uh, of Jesus Christ. But what I'm saying today is there's a whole lot of different interpretations. I don't argue with people about it. I state my case, and I don't have time to get into all the events that are going to happen in the future. But I just want to cover these main ones that Jesus talked about. It was important enough for Jesus to tell us, right? Y'all with me? Yeah. All right. Now, I'm not somebody who's into charts usually. I mean, some guys have these charts that are like every minute of every day figured out. But I found this chart on major events that are going to happen. Do we got that chart, Will? Are we going to be able to do yeah, Okay. Hopefully you can see this. Um, this. This over here says present church age. That's the age we're in. That's the age since Jesus died and rose again. And then on this timeline, the next thing is the rapture of the church. Then the years of tribulation, which are kind of split up into three and a half years, the beginning of sorrows, the great tribulation, and in the middle of that, the desecration of the temple, the abomination of de desolation, then the return of Christ, then the millennial reign of Christ, then the final judgment, the great white throne judgment, and then everybody goes off into eternity. Those are the things we're going to talk about today. And there's differences, as I said, about when people believe those will occur. This is the way I was taught. This is the way I believed. I believe this is the order they will happen. If it's some other order, 
Uh, I'll be okay with it. God's, God's got it figured out. Remember I told you last week, all the prophecies about Jesus and everybody thought they had it figured out about the Messiah and most of them missed him. I'm sure that with all the different interpretations, there, there's some, they can't all be right. And I'm sure there may be some things on it that, that, that we see differently Then somebody's got to be right. But ultimately God will, is right and we'll, we will see it. Uh, but I, I just want to remind you of the, the more than 1,000 1, prophecies, prophecies, prophecies in the Bible. Over 500 of them have already been fulfilled with 100% accuracy. And the remaining prophecies concern the end times or the last days. And since God is batting a 1,000, I believe I expect him to do so and to continue to do so. So I believe the next thing to happen on the prophetic calendar is the rapture of the church. You do not find the word rapture in the Bible. But what the Bible says is there will be a great catching away of the people of God. You, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 through 18, this is in the Amplified Version. For this we declare to you by the Lord's own word. This is, the, the Lord said it. That we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall in no way proceed into his presence or have any advantage at all over those who have previously fallen asleep in him in death. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Not a secret thing, not a quiet thing, not a spiritual thing. The, the, the Lord will physically return with a shout, with a trumpet, with the voice of an angel. Then we, the living ones who remain on the earth, shall simultaneously be caught up. This is the catching up uh, uh, along with the resurrected dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so always we shall be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort and encourage one another with these words. The rapture will remove all Christians from the world. And Christians who have died will be resurrected, and every Christian who is alive on earth will be removed to heaven without experiencing death. Jesus taught it in Matthew 24, 40 through 42. The two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. Watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. I believe the rapture of the church could happen at any time. That means we need to be ready for it. And after the Christians are raptured out, out of this world, a, a seven-year period begins on earth called the Great Tribulation. And as, it, as this name uh, uh, sounds and suggests, this is a time of trouble, intense trouble, intense turmoil for those who remain on the earth. I mean, it, it will be the worst time, the Bible said it, we read it, the worst time that we've ever seen or ever will see. I'll read it again. Jesus said it in Matthew 24, 21. There will be great tribulation such as not, then there shall be great tribulation such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time, nor ever shall be. The book of Revelation deals with the tribulation in detail in chapters 6 through 18. I encourage you to read it. And it shows that this time, this time of tribulation is, is a time when the Antichrist shows up. And, and that's what's meant by the abomination of desolation when he goes in and defiles the, the temple. And the Antichrist will talk about peace, but he will want to destroy Israel. And, and that, that's the time of the last great battle on the earth called the Battle of Armageddon. I don't have time to go into detail on any of these today. Let me just say this about the great tribulation. You don't want to go through it. And I believe, I believe the good news is if you're saved, you won't be there because the Lord will have taken you out of the world at the rapture. Now, if we are there, I believe God will get us through it. But I believe the way I've been taught is that we will be raptured, then the great tribulation, then comes the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, some people get confused here because they, they confuse the rapture of the church and the second coming of Jesus Christ, but they are different. Or you could say the, the second coming happens in two phases or two parts. Part one is the rapture. Part two is Jesus coming back to the earth. At the rapture, Jesus comes for his saints. He meets them in the air. At the second coming, he comes with his saints. At the rapture, he comes down from heaven but doesn't come all the way to the earth. Like I said, it says he meets them in the air. And at the second coming, he literally touches down on the face of the earth. Zechariah talked about that. Zechariah 14, 4 through 5. On that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem. And the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west. 
I don't know how preterists or other people that try to explain this away because that mountain is still there. I've been on it. I've stood on it. It hasn't been split in half. And it will form a great valley with half the mountain moving north and half the mountain moving south. There's no valley right there right now. There's a Kidron Valley between the, the Mount of Olives and the, the, the eastern wall there and, and gate. But that, that mountain is still there. I've been on it. But at the end, when Jesus steps foot, that's where he's going to come back. That's where he's going to set foot. And that mountain's going to split in two. You'll flee by my mountain valley. You'll flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Then the Lord my God will come and the holy ones with him. That's the second coming of Jesus Christ. And at, at that time, that Jesus will usher in what is called the millennium. And the word millennium literally means 1,000 years. The millennium is a thousand-year period where Jesus Christ reigns on this earth in righteousness, in peace, in harmony. It's the kingdom of heaven on earth. Everyone will worship the Lord. This is when we as believers, the Bible said, we will rule and reign with him on the earth. That is an awesome thing. It's an amazing thing. During that time, Satan is bound in the bottomless pit so he cannot deceive. You find that in Revelation 27 through 8. It says, when the thousand years are over, Satan will be released. He has been bound, but he'll be released from his prison and go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth to gather them for battle. Notice he was locked up so he can't deceive. That shows you what the major work of Satan is. It's to deceive you. It's to deceive me. It's to deceive people. But, but he's going to be bound up for a thousand years. And, and then after that, he's going to once again attempt to overthrow the kingdom of God, overthrow Jesus Christ. He, he will be unsuccessful. And that will be the end of the world. And after this a thousand year reign on earth, the next coming, uh, upcoming event will be the great white throne judgment. This is one of the most awesome thoughts you can ever have, and I want you to get this in your mind because Revelation 20, 11 through 15, John says he saw a great white throne and, uh, and, and him, who seated, who, him who was seated on it, and I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were open. Now listen to me. We're all going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ, and, and people are going to stand at the great white throne of judgment. We're all going to stand before God one day, Right? I mean, if you don't believe anything about end times or prophecy, know this. Jesus is coming back one day, and you're going to stand before God one day. You need to be ready when he comes back, because you're going to stand before God one day. Books were open, multiple books. I preach whole sermons on this, on the books that, in the Bible that are about you. I encourage you to go back and find those. But, and I think that one of those books is books that kind of shows what people did and didn't do and, and all those things. And another book was open, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead were, that were in them. And each person was judged according to what he had done. Now listen. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire was the second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. All men will stand before God's throne one day. Everybody will be judged on what they've done. And I believe, according to what's in the books of what we've done, all of us will deserve eternity apart from Christ. That means hell. That means separation from God. But... If your name is in the Lamb's book of life, if your name is in the book of life that says you will be saved, that's my question to you today. If you're lost, you're lost forever. There's no second chances. There's no purgatory. There's no getting out. If you're saved, you're saved forever. And the question is, have you been born again? That's how you, have you received new life in Christ? You, you, when, you, when you're born, you're born. But when you're born again, you're born into the kingdom of God. And, and you have a new life. You're a new creature. You're born again. All things are passed away. All things have become, become new. You've got to make sure your name is in the Lamb's book of life. And that happens when you receive the Lamb of God as your Lord and Savior, when you put your faith in the finished work of Jesus on the cross. You don't stand before God. Paul, the apostle, 
Think of all he did. I would never try to compare myself to Paul. Paul said, I don't want to stand before God having a righteousness that is of myself, a righteousness that is my own. So many people think, oh, I'm, you can tell somebody who doesn't understand grace and doesn't understand God when they're like, oh, no, I'm good with God. I'm good with God. I don't have to believe in Jesus. I'm good with God. None of that stuff matters. Me and God, we're, we're okay. No, you're not. The only way you can be okay with God is through Jesus. He is the only way, the only truth, the only life. There is no other way. And, and, and you trying to be good enough is not good enough. How good is good enough? Jesus is good enough. He's the only one good enough. And we all fall short of that glory. And you stand up, you, you ask anybody who, uh, uh, now if you compare yourself to Jesus, are you telling me you're as good as him, you're as holy as him, you're as righteous as him? They're going to say, oh, no, 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 no. Then I say, you're not good enough. We all fall short of his glory. We all fall short. And we all need a Savior. We all need the lamb. We all need the cross. We all need the blood of Jesus. We all need the grace of God. We all need the mercy of God. And when we receive that, we are in the lamb's book of life. And we don't have to worry about standing before God someday. It's going to be a glorious thing. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I'm not pleading my works. I'm not pleading what I've done. I'm not going to say, well, I started a church. And, man, we were even multi-ethnic. And look what happened. We made an impact. And, and look at all the people that we impacted. I'm not going to say that. I'm not well, I was married to the same woman for, for 46 years. You know, that wasn't easy. And I'm going to say, God, you know. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's the biggest blessing in my life. I promise you. I promise you. You know what I'm saying? God's not operating on the point system. Come on, somebody. It's Jesus. And Jesus alone is the blood and the blood alone, the cross and the cross alone is your name in the Lamb's book of life. If not, you'll be lost forever. And that brings us to the final upcoming event, which is eternity. Eternity in either heaven or hell. After this world ends, a new one begins, which will never end. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. And we'll know, regardless of what the preterists think, we're not on the new earth right now. And you'll spend eternity either with God or separated from him. And since the rapture is the next event, the question is, are you ready or, or will you be left behind? Jesus, I told you the scriptures where Jesus said, there's going to be some people left behind. In Matthew 24, Jesus told his disciples, I'm going away, but I'm coming back. By the way, as far as Jesus coming back, you remember when he ascended into heaven, this just came to me. Uh, thank you, Lord. I come to me. Some stuff comes to me while I'm preaching that's better than the stuff I already had. But remember when Jesus ascended and his disciples went outside Jerusalem, they saw him ascend to the heaven. Remember that? Anybody read that part of the Bible? Yeah. And the angel, what the angel said, hey, why are you looking up there? Hey, know this, the same way he went up, same way he's coming back. He was seen. Going up, <laughs> he's going to be seen, coming back. And in Matthew 24, 39 through 42, Jesus said, This is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. I read you this. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken. One left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Jesus said, I'm leaving, but I'm coming back, and you need to be ready. That's why it's important for us to be established in the truth of the second coming of Jesus Christ. It causes us to be ready to meet him. All of us will face him one day, and it might be sooner than you think. And so we've got to live our lives every day as if this could be the day we face God. This could be the day that life as we know it ends. This could be the day that is the beginning of eternity. We must live ready to meet the Lord. Are you ready? The Bible teaches Jesus is coming back. It's very specific specific about how this will happen, not when, but how. So we've got to be ready. I mean, every generation since Jesus died and resurrected, Christians have thought, this is it. This is the last generation. Every, pretty much every generation has thought that. But one thing I know, we're closer than they were. We're closer than any other preceding generation. And, and, and I don't think we need to get all, all concerned about it, but, but we just need to know, hey, he's coming back. 
and we need to be ready. And Jesus taught in Matthew 24, 30 what his second coming would look like. At that time, the Son of Man will appear in the sky. All the nations will mourn. They'll see the Son of Man coming on the cloud with power and glory. All the nations will see the Son of Man coming with power and great glory. It will be a physical return visible to everybody. It's not going to be why I think he came back, you know, a couple years ago. Nobody saw it, but he kind of snuck into town. And No, every eye will see it. Jesus is coming back with power and authority. He's going to return suddenly and unexpectedly. And, and he said, you better be ready. There's no second chances. In fact, the Bible ends with these words like one of the last verses of the Bible is Revelation 22, 20. He who testifies to these things says, Says, surely I am coming quickly. Even so, amen, even so, come Lord Jesus. People at that time believed that the kingdom of God would come to earth and Jesus would rule on the earth and they would rule with him. They had their facts right. They just had the timing wrong. They didn't understand that when Jesus came the first time, he came as a suffering servant. They only saw the parts about him coming to the earth as a conquering king. That's how he's coming back. He came the first time as a suffering servant. He's coming back as a conquering king. Revelation 19, 11 through 16 says it. John said, I saw heaven standing open, and before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He's dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Jesus came the first time as a lamb that was slain. He's coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah. The first time he came, he submitted to the kings that were in earthly authority. When he's coming back, he's coming back as the king of kings and the Lord of lords. The first time he was a baby dressed in swaddling clothes, he's coming back in a robe dipped in blood. The first time he came to die, he's coming back to raise the dead. The first time he wore a crown of thorns, the next time he'll wear a crown of glory. The first time he died on the cross, he's coming back as a conquering king. The first time he came as the savior of the world, the second time he's coming back as the judge of the world. The first time he came in meekness, he's coming back in majesty. The first time he came in poverty, he's coming back in power. The first time he rode a lowly donkey into Jerusalem, when he comes back, he's a conquering king, riding a white horse, leading the armies of God. His eyes are like the flame of fire. Out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. His name will be written on his thigh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And when he comes, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is God is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Are you ready to meet him? Are you ready for that day? Are you ready? 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 Think about it. I mean, think about it. This, don't take it lightly. Think about it. Are you ready? And, and being ready doesn't mean you're perfect. It doesn't mean you do everything right. But it means you're trusting in Jesus as your, own, as your Savior. You've been born again. You've repented of going your own way, of trying to make yourself righteous, of trying to make yourself look good. And you said, I, I, I'm giving up on me, and I'm trusting in Jesus. All my faith is in him. All my hope is in him. My salvation is in him. My forgiveness is in him. My future is him, in him. I just want to pray. I just want to lead you in a prayer. And I just want to, I want to pray just over you. And if, you, if you've never done that, you don't have to pray out loud. But you can just pray in your heart after me right now. Just pray, Lord, come into my life. Lord, I need you. Lord, I, I repent of trying to be good enough on my own. I repent of thinking I, thinking I could be good enough on my own. I need you. I need a righteousness greater than mine. I need you in my life. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Give me a new life, Lord. Take me out of darkness into light. I give my life to you. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Save me. Change me. 
Make me your child. Write my name in your book of life. In Jesus' name. Just with your head bowed, if you prayed that prayer, just, just lift your head up real quick around the auditorium. If you prayed that prayer today, say, I, 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 I'm, I'm asking Jesus in. I'm, I'm giving him my life. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Online, if you're saying, hey, I, I'm giving my heart to Jesus today. I, I want my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Just online in the comments, you can put hashtag my decision. And uh, please do that. And we'll, we'll contact you and pray with you and, and uh, just want to bless you. And thank you. Thank you. Lord, I just thank you for these that have given their heart and life to you today. And for those who recommitted their heart and life to you today. God, I thank you for that. I bless you for that. I pray your blessings on your people. God, I pray you bless them going in and coming out. Lord, I pray you would camp round about them. I pray you would give charge to your angel concerning them. God, I pray that no evil, no plague, no pestilence, no disease would come near them or their dwelling place. I plead the blood of Jesus over them. I stand in the gap for them, Lord, and we together, we resist the enemy in the name of Jesus Lord, we submit to you. We resist the enemy, and he must flee. God, and we just speak forth your salvation. We speak forth your goodness. We speak forth your mercy and your grace. We receive it, your protection, your provision. God, I come against fear in the name of Jesus. I thank you that you've not given us fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Thank you, Lord, that you're coming back for us. God, we're in your hands. We love you. We trust you. We bless you. And we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks for being with us today. I want to remind you we're doing, uh, we have a Bible study on Wednesday nights. It's online only. It's been really good on the book of James. I'm really enjoying it. But you can go back and watch those. And, but our ushers, we're going to sing one last song, and our ushers are going to usher you out. Know that I love you and I bless you and I'm so glad you're here today. For those watching online, thanks for watching. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone. It Ah uh -huh.